Hi, my name's Lance Williams. I hope you got to watch that healing conference that we just had in Charlotte, North Carolina. If you did not, I highly recommend that you go back and watch that. I think you'll really be blessed by it. What I want to talk to you about today is how the Bible is not just a book that we read. It's not just some other book. It's not just some ancient manuscript. It's not just some historical book that we read when we read it. Although it is a historical book, it is an ancient manuscript, it is a book, it's not only those things. What I want to talk to you and show you from the Word today is that the Word of God, the Bible, is living. It's living. God Himself is the creator of life. When man creates something, we can make objects and things that don't have life in them. But when God creates something, He has the ability to give whatever He creates life. He created the grass, the trees, the flowers. He created the birds. He created the sea creatures. And He created human beings. And when He created us, when He made us, He formed us out of the dirt according to Genesis chapter 1. And it wasn't until God breathed His life in us that we became living. So in His breath, or in His word, you could say, it is living. It is living. And God and His word are one. So if God is the giver of life, therefore His word is also the source of life. Over in John, John chapter 1, it talks about that the Word, it says the Word was with God in the beginning, and the Word was God. And in verse 14, it says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. So God and His Word are one. He is living, and His Word is living. So I'm going to be in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I'll give you a second to get there. Hebrews 4.12 For the Word of God is living. It is living. And not only is it living, but it's also active. So the Word of God is alive and active. What does active mean? Active, if in the original text, it's the word inner, inner gaze. So, and that's, that's what we get the word energy from. So the word of God is full of energy. It's active. It's at work, you could say. But it only does us good when we put it in our hearts and in our minds. We must take the Word of God, and when we, when we read the Word of God, when we meditate and ponder on the Word, when we speak the Word, and when we act on the Word, we are thinking and speaking and acting on the life source. And when we do that, the Word becomes effective in our life. It becomes active in our life, and then it will change us from the inside out. One of the greatest revelations that I got a hold of was that God's word would change me if I would just put it in my heart. All I had to do was take the seed of God's word, plant it in my heart, and it would literally change me from the inside out. Over in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it talks about that the way to prosperity, the way, the way to good success is by meditating the word, speaking the word, and doing the word. And when I got a hold of that, it just transformed my life. By planting God's Word on the inside of me. When I, first of all, when I received Him, when I came to the Lord and accepted Him as my Lord and as my Savior, I got a new spirit. But when I started planting His Word in my heart, it literally changed who I am. I no longer think the same, speak the same act the same as I used to. 
Because when I received Christ, I, I was at that point a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. The, the new had come according to 2 Corinthians 5, or, uh, chapter 5, verse 17. But when I started planting God's Word in my heart, I started drawing on who I was in the Spirit. And so now I am, I'm a living, walking new creation. I'm literally, I was a new creation in my spirit, but I'm literally made new in my thinking, in my speaking, and in my behavior. Why? Because God's Word, and because I realize God's Word is living. And when I planted I, when I planted that life source on the inside of me, it just brought life throughout my whole being. And now I've been totally transformed. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So planting God's Word in our mind actually brings life to our total being. Because the mind is the doorway to the heart. And once we meditate the Word and saturate our mind with it, it gets in our heart, and then we act on the Word out of our heart, and it literally, the Word, becomes a part of us. Just like in John chapter 1 in the Gospel of John, when it said in verse 14 that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus was the Word, so when we do the Word... When we have fellowship and relationship with the Word, we're actually having fellowship and relationship with Jesus. And then when we act on that, the Word literally becomes a part of us and the Word is continuously becoming flesh in your life and in mine. That's awesome. If we can get a hold of that, that truth right there, and apply that to our lives, it will transform your life. It is awesome. It has mine. It has really blessed me. God showing that to me. So it's living and active. Then I want to jump over here to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And I'm going to be in verse 26, but first of all, I want to give some context. Because in this parable, it's a great parable. And this parable is recorded in Mark chapter 4, Matthew chapter 13, and Luke chapter 8. Uh, and a lot of the Bibles, it's called the parable of the sower. Anyway, in this parable, Jesus is talking about the seed. And the seed is the Word of God, the, the Scriptures. And it can be planted in, in someone's life, but they can let things choke the Word. But there's, a, there's one type of ground that's good ground. And when that man plants it, and he don't let persecution or offense or worry and anxiety choke out the Word, it says the Word produces. Over in Peter, it talks about that the Word is the incorruptible seed. The Word is not the problem. It's our hearts, our flesh, that's the problem. But if we can learn to understand that God's Word is living, we can accept it as living the life source, and we can keep things from choking out that Word, it will, be, it will begin to produce in our life. And even if, it's, if you're already doing that, we can walk in this to a greater degree. And that's what I love about God's Word. It's, it's never something that you just get. Because I, I have some revelation, some things that's really transformed my life, but I can always walk in it to a greater degree. That's the beauty of God's Word. So he's talking about planting the seed. The seed is the Word of God. Planting it in your heart. Planting it in the ground. See, God created us from the ground. Just like you plant a natural seed in the ground and it produces, when we plant God's seed in this ground, it will produce if we don't let things choke it out, the things that I just mentioned. You can read that 
parable and get an understanding of what can choke out the Word. But my focus today is that the Word is living. Matthew chapter 4, verse 26. And he was saying, The kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil. And he goes to bed at night and gets up by day, and the seed sprouts and grows. How? He himself does not know. The soil produces crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. But when the crop permits, he immediately puts it in the sickle, and because the harvest and because the harvest has come. So this man planted seed. And he went to sleep and it grew, and he didn't know how it grew. He just knew that it grew. And it's the same thing with God's Word. See, this man planted the seed. And so, a lot of times, I mean, even now, we don't know exactly, we don't know everything about a seed and how it works when we plant it. Just like when we plant God's Word, we may not really understand how it's really going to change us like it does, but it will. It will. I, this... I am living proof of these passages of scriptures. And I'm sure many of you have experienced this or know somebody who's experienced this, who was one way before and now they're just a completely different way because of God's word. And the way that I went about this is God called me to go to Bible college. And I was messed up on drugs when I went there. But I went there and I sit under the word of God four hours a day, five days a week. And then even outside of school, I, I was in the Word, meditating the Word. When I was at work, even now when I'm at work and doing other things, I'm pondering the Word. Yesterday, most of the day I was just pondering that I have the mind of Christ. And I, was just, I just kept thinking about that, thinking about that. I was, as I was working, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. And I would think about it when... Other people weren't around. I would quietly speak it out loud because I want that seed to get on the inside of me. I want it to become a part of who I am so that I can literally experience having the mind of Christ and drawing on His mind throughout my day and throughout my life. So we plant this seed. We plant a living seed on the inside of us and it will begin to produce in our life. Just when a man and a woman come together and they, they plant the seed, the seed fertilizes the egg and it creates life. And the baby grows in the woman for nine months and then life is born. See, there's pictures of this all around us. But the seed was living in the very beginning. When the seed was planted and released, the seed was living. Just like God's Word right now, this seed is living. Now we need to let this seed fertilize our egg. We need to let this seed germinate in our ground. We need to let the seed of God's Word produce in our life. And we can do that. You can do that. It's simple. It's simple. Understanding the Word of God is living and just planting it on the inside of us. And by planting it, we need to spend time and have a relationship with the Word. And as I've already mentioned, as we do that, we're actually having a relationship with Jesus. Because Jesus is the Word. Let's go down to verse 30, Mark chapter 4, verse 30. How shall we picture the kingdom of God? Or by what, what parable shall we present it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the soul, though it is smaller than all the seeds that are upon the soul, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and forms large branches so that the birds of the air can nest under its shade. The Word of God may seem small. The Holy Scriptures may 
seem small and may seem like they can't produce that big of change. But when planted, as this is talking about, it says at the very beginning, it says, how shall we picture the kingdom of God? So this is likening this parable to the kingdom. It says it's a mustard seed. The mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. But when planted, it can become massive. And it's the same with God's Word. It may seem small, but just one scripture, I mean literally just one scripture when planted can transform your life. I used to, we've all dealt with worry and anxiety before. And at one point in my life, God had me plant the seed of 1 Corinthians 5, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 2 Peter 5, 7. It talks about casting our care on the Lord. It says, let me just, let me just read this real quick. Just to give you an example, it's not 2 Peter, it's 1 Peter 5, 7. I'm going to start in verse 6. So, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in proper time, casting all your anxiety on Him, because He cares for you. At one point in my life, God had me plant that seed on the inside of me. And since I planted that and I continued to ponder that and speak that and apply that to my life, it just transformed my life. Now, even today, worry and temptation... I mean, there's opportunity to be worry, to worry and, and be anxious about things. But because I planted this seed in my heart, because I understood that this right here is a part of Jesus, it is living, and I planted this living life source in my heart, now when things come, I go back to this scripture and I apply this scripture. Lord, I'm not going to be anxious. You told me not to be anxious. Whatever it is, I'll I give it to you right now. You know, whatever it is you're facing, and the things that I'm facing in the morning, I'll say, God, I in the moment, I God, I give this to you. You told me to be anxious for nothing, to cast my care on you, to cast my anxiety on you, and that's what I'm doing right now. Thank you for taking these things from me, so that I don't have to carry them. See, I planted this seed, and now it's a part of me. And because the word is life. It brings life in those situations, in those situations, because worry and fear and anxiety, that is a type of death. And I combat that with life. Just like you combat darkness with light, you combat death with life. And the word of God is life. The enemy come at Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 tried to bring death upon him, tried to bring darkness upon him. And how did Jesus combat that? Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. He come back at Satan with the word. How did he deal with it in situations that caused fear, like when the, the water was crashing over the boat? In the Gospels, there's a story of the, the water crashing in the boat. Jesus was asleep on the pillow. And all the disciples, they were freaking out. They were fearful. They thought they was going to die. And they went and woke up Jesus and said, Teacher, Master, don't you care? We're perishing. We're dying. Don't you care? And Jesus got up and spoke. He spoke the word of God. Peace be still, because Jesus is the Word. So what, whatever He spoke was the Word. And He spoke, peace be still. And it brought peace into the midst of the situation. So Jesus has already showed us that you combat evil, the devil himself, darkness, whatever it is, demonic forces, you combat that with the Word of God. Because it is the life source. And circumstances, like the story I just shared, 
that are causing fear and panic and anxiety. Jesus combated that with the Word. And that is what we are to do. Why? Because the Word is living. When we put it in us and when we speak it out, it's life coming from our lips. Proverbs 18.21 says, The power of life and death is in the tongue. We have the choice to speak death, to speak from, to speak the way the enemy speaks and what the enemy speaks. Or we have the choice to speak life. What is life? God's Word. In John chapter 6, verse 63, John 6, 63, Jesus said, The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. His Word is spirit and life. His Word can bring us life and peace. And not only bring us life and peace, but bring others life and peace, the ones around us. When, when people are around us, they should be experiencing life and peace by our actions, by our words, and by our thought life. Because see, whatever we're thinking on, it it puts off a certain frequency. It puts off a certain vibration. Whatever's in our subconscious mind, whatever's in our heart, it puts off vibrations. That's why you can get around people and, you know, some people you can just feel like has a bad vibe or feel like they're putting off a good vibe. You know, that's a little slang right there, but that's, there's a principle behind that because every person puts off certain vibrations. The words that we speak put off vibrations. There was a study done, uh, it's been some time ago, but it was with water crystals, and they, they played like hate, words of hate and just words of death and things over these water crystals, and then over here they played words like love and peace and, and those types of words over these. And then they looked at the water crystals later on, and you could see the, the water crystals that had things of death played over it and spoken over it were just ugly and deformed looking. And the ones that had positive words spoken over it, they were beautiful crystals. You can look it up on the Internet. But see, because our words and, and our thoughts... We put off vibrations. So by meditating on God's Word, by meditating on the life source and speaking the life source, we are multiplying the life source into our situation. There's some people that it's just hard to be around because they complain all the time. I hope you're not that person. But there's people like that that just complain and they're just so negative all the time and they're hard to be around. Why? Because they're putting off that vibration. And it's vibrations of death. But there's other people that you really want to be around because they're putting off the vibration of life. Because they're thinking and speaking the life source. This is powerful, folks. By understanding that His Word is living, it'll transform your life. So now when you're believing for something, whether it's finances or health in your body or whatever it is, since this is Healing Journeys today, let's talk about healing specifically. When you're believing for healing, and now you're actively putting the Word of God in you, let's say you're meditating that uh, you know Matthew eight seventeen that Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, and you're taking that, and you're thinking Jesus took my infirmities, He bore my sicknesses. So you're thinking on that, you're speaking it. Jesus took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. It gets on the in, you're you're actively getting it on the inside of you. But now here's the key: you have to believe that that Word of God is actively working on the inside of you. Because as Hebrews 4.12 said, it's living and it's active. It's full of energy. It's at work. 
Just like when you go plant a seed in a garden, you don't dig it up to see if it's growing. You just believe that that seed is at work and that it will produce. It's the same with God's Word. When we plant it, we must believe that the seed is at work and that it will produce in our life. That's awesome. So when you're meditating, you're speaking, and you're believing for healing, I want you to believe that that word that you've been planting in your heart and in your mind, I want you to believe that it is at work right now and that it's at work 24-7. Because God gave us a picture of this in the natural realm, as I just described, planting a seed. This is just the spiritual equivalent of that. Except His seed is incorruptible. Where natural seeds have corruption in them, His seed does not have corruption. So by planting this seed and believing that this seed is living and that it's at work in me right now and that it will produce, we'll start getting better results and we can allow the Word to be more productive in our life. Amen. Well, that's what I have for you today. I really hope, um, I really hope that this blessed you, and I really hope that from now on, if you haven't already, I hope from now on that as we read the Word and we have fellowship and relationship with the Word, that we realize we're having relationship with the life source, and with the Creator, and with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we just thank you that you're a good God. Thank you that you love us so so much. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is living. Thank you that it's alive. And all we have to do is plant the seed. And your living, life-giving word will produce in our life. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you for helping us to give place to your seed. And to let your seed germinate in our hearts and in our minds. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. I want to read you one other passage of Scripture real quick, and then I'll finish. It's in Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. I'm going to start in verse 8. Isaiah 55, 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is the Lord speaking through the prophet. Nor are my ways, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. His word will accomplish that for which he sent it. So whatever your need is, you plant the seed of God's Word and believe that it is active on the inside of you. You believe that even when you're sleeping at night that that Word is working on the inside of you because it is. It is. His Word is not passive. It is active. It is aggressive. So I encourage you, plant the seed, believe it's working on the inside of you and give it some time because God has has a system now there's miracles where miracles happen but there's a principle of God seed time and harvest and that's revealed in the book of Genesis that's in the natural world that's in the spiritual world seed time and harvest plant the seed water the seed give it some time and it will produce a harvest in your life so God bless you.